What's going on, everybody? This is Fry. So welcome to round 11 of the Pantheon tournaments. Again, there were eight rounds of regular season, so to speak, and now we're in the playoffs. Uh, I won round 9, and I lost round 10, spoilers, uh, to try hard. So this is going to be round 11. I'm in loser's bracket, which means this is a double elimination tournament. Once you lose two rounds in the playoffs, again, the playoffs were all the people in the regular season who had the best record. Once you lose two times, you're eliminated. So I'm sort of in loser's bracket, meaning I'm playing against other people who have also lost one game so far, and the sort of exciting thing about this part is whoever loses actually gets eliminated from the entire tournament, and the winner goes on, and if you can make it to the end, you end up having to actually beat the guy who won every game in the playoffs. You have to beat him twice because it's a double elimination. Anyway, now, I'm actually recording this part of the video after the fact, so this narration is going to be after the entire tournament's over. I'm not going to spoil anything about future rounds. Uh, I'm just going to be talking about this round and what my mindset is. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because my microphone was not working while I was playing the tournament match, and I only realized that afterwards. The whole thing is has like game sound, but it doesn't have any voice sound. So uh, right now what I've done is I've taken, I'm live streaming this, so you can actually see the live chat over there is also going to be the live, you know, while I'm recording this part. So this screen of the camera is uh, is happening after the fact, the live chat over there is also happening after the fact, but everything else on the screen, including the gameplay, which is the main part, uh, that was, I was recording, uh, I wasn't live streaming it, I was just recording it while I was playing my tournament match, uh, so I've never done anything like this before, but I think this will be a, a lot of fun. Um, so going into this match, um, I had just lost to Tryhard. I had found a little bit of a pattern, uh, just to introduce sort of this first match. Uh, you see I'm actually going to be using... Valkyrie hybrid in this is that round eight. I feel like the tournament really took three phases. Until round eight, I was just playing Valkyrie hybrid and Trick Mech and Psycho Pine Clones and just the decks I knew to be good. I wasn't really preparing very much. Uh, I ended up getting wrecked by someone in round eight who just built a deck to just completely counter uh, Valtrix, your hybrid, and he banned z -Mag, so I wasn't able to use that, so I was kind of forced to just use one deck, and he built a Grass Knuckles deck with Forget-Me-Nuts and Triceratops and Black IP and just the, uh, a million things to actually counter the deck. So, um, I really went away from it. I've been using a lot of Neptuna, etc. I ended up losing to Tryhard last week, uh, and one of the decks he used against me was this Chomzilla Ringzilla deck, and I was actually really expecting to sort of face this deck uh, in this round, since that sort of was the one that countered my Neptuna deck. Uh, it just seemed to be like a good choice if I wasn't using Valkster. I really wanted to bring back the Valkster in this round um, in order to just keep people honest and make sure that they're not just spamming Haunted Pumpkins and Split Peas and cards that are very good, let's say, against the Hardy class, uh, but not very good against the Crazy class and control decks like this, like the Valkster. So... Um, that's a good introduction to this game, that's why I chose this deck. Uh, as you'll see in a second, I, uh, I kind of guessed right. Um, so again, this was the beginning of the match. I'm playing against JDDD, which is otherwise known as Happy Shroom. Um, for yet. Getting some permanent bans in the chat, that's fun. Alright, so we're mulliganing. I'm gonna try to actually explain what my mindset is. You definitely have to hard mulligan for a Valk or a Trickster. Uh, we did end up getting a Valk. Uh, unfortunately, we ended up with two Teleports and a Trapper, so it's not great. The Trapper might be useful in this matchup. He did end up, again, picking the Chumzilla. Um, that I was sort of expecting. <sighs> um, he goes for Haunted Pumpkin. So again, this is just this idea. They're just going to spam Pumpkin. It could be in this matchup once you see the, the control deck, by the way. Better not to play anything and play uh, Onion Rings on turn 5 and then try to swarm on turn 6 and 7 and don't let me get value out of my tricks and don't, you know, kind of like ignore the minions that I play. Unfortunately, we <laughs> still don't have like a Bungie Plumber. You know, one of the whole things that makes this good is Bungie Plumber on 1, beat me up on 2, didn't end up getting either of these. Uh, looking for that Backup Dancer in 2 and we got it, we are able to combine that with the Trapper territory. Um in order to at least take the one card off the field. Again, the Valk is growing. The placement of the Pumpkin right now in the Backup Dancer is unfortunate, because if we play our Quasar, um, in order to get the power, we can't actually, <laughs> can't actually front the Pumpkin. Getting Evaporate is like, uh 
not an easy card to end up using if we can get value from it that'll be great but so far not in good shape we did roll double threes though you'll see we have 12 health and a really full block meter so that's the one redeeming quality the question is do you burn the teleport here for a card because we're in desperate need of control he actually passed turn three which is a miracle like if he was able to follow up with that with just another pumpkin or just something to play even a catch -a mechanic would have been really really good in lane four um we end up teleporting burning the teleport just to try to get a card we're rolling slightly better than average uh, you end up actually not even getting the California roll, real 3 3 1, so the, the double threes didn't matter at all. Uh, the Quasar's pretty good there, but again, the superpower is not a defensive one at all. Um, so, in this situation, again, we have to get something going before the, the, the onion rings come out. I mean, that's gonna be the really big threat against this deck, because once he's playing a lot of four fours, we're not gonna be able to keep up with that. Uh, unfortunately, our, our you know we have a trickster that's only at nine, and then a Valk that's only at two. I don't, I mean, I guess it's better than covering. This was just a really, really sad play. Uh, apparently he doesn't have an onion rings in your hand or else. Why would he play? I just don't even see the value of it too far. I guess proccing the block is good if he's going for the aggro strat. We happen to have three lanes clogged, and now he has an empty field. It is better than covering the pumpkin, probably, because this turn, all you do is proc the block, and then the fruitcake just ends up being extremely sad. Um, he's playing around fruitcake. I think that's that's fine. Again, if you have no onion rings, probably going for a proc the block here and then absorbing a free cake out of our hands. But at this point, like, if he has an Onion Rings, he's fine, and if he doesn't, he is in a uh, really losing position, despite the health difference and everything, because we have three lanes clogged. He's just not going to be able to get that aggression. He got that from Fruitcake. It's so annoying. We actually top deck a Bungie, which activates our Evaporate. Pretty obvious play. It looks like the Trickster is actually getting to better shape here than the Valk. Uh, it's some, I don't know if it's the exact Ringzilla. Again, this is a lot of high attack early game, which you can opt to play aggressive, which is the way he played. Probably because he didn't have an Onion Rings in hand. If he had one, he would have played it there. Um, setting up the Mustache Monument early. I think it's because we have Rockwall and Fruitcake, and Chomsilo really doesn't have any removal cards. Like, someone who could, like, deal with that and decks that ran a lot of hammers, I, he does run catch it mechanics, so... I, probably since I'm a little more familiar with the Ringzilla decklist, I know they run, like, three or four catch it mechanics, I probably would not have played a fourth minion there because it just becomes really sad, but... I mean, even then, we just have to proc his block and then do two damage, and then the, the Trickster just wins next turn. So even, a, I mean, a catch it mechanic would heal for... He just healed for four, so a catch it mechanic would have done the same thing. I guess he would play now, he'd be at 18, but even then, like, proc the block, do 4 damage, I don't know. That's very interesting fronting Vampire, who's only doing 2, and you're you're risking a bunch of, you know, we have, we had one Quasar at superpower, it just didn't seem like it was worth it. Um, so we're gonna get a nice hefty attack with the vampire but at the end of the day where are you going to put that it actually loses a trade in all the other lanes at least there was an even trade it just seems like a hopeless situation right now like if he doesn't have more strike through cards and he doesn't have an onion rings and we have four lanes clogged how is he supposed to win and that's actually guaranteed lethal because we proc the block with the last hit and he's under 12 health we can do 12 here um so we take game one I, I feel like this is a very big misunderstanding of what people think that they think that Valkster is just like a control like you're just doing damage to your opponent's minions the way you control the main way is by keeping every single lane clogged every single turn you have backup dancers that's why quasar is such an important part of the deck uh the barrel is very hard to take out the beam me ups you can if there ends up if they end up opening a lane you just reclog it you can teleport anything in uh you have summoning you have so many things and again just analyze that situation that he was in um it was, it was almost impossible to win unless he could pull out so many strike-through cards, which he just didn't end up having. And if he plays the strike-through cards, we have easy answers to that with Fruitcake and stuff. Like, you just control the cards that are going to hit your face, and you clog every single, every other thing. All right, so that was game one. Uh, we used the Valkster. It went exactly. We got exactly the matchup that we were looking for. Again, it's okay against a lot of the other decks. It's not going to be good against Citron or Grass Knuckles. Uh, at this point, we had actually banned Grass Knuckles, so it actually made Valkster better, because Grass Knuckles, you know, that deck, the red deck with the Forget-Me-Nuts and the 
black eyed peas on the triceratops that was actually one of the problems so my mindset going into this one was just trying to use a really strong deck and i found the bullseye grass knuckles it was very very successful i had actually modded a couple of things in this deck um after testing this i was testing with Samon, my my um sparring partner so to speak i was um i wanted to make the deck a little bit stronger against the crazy class particularly gargmech i found that um, that was a less good of a matchup. You know, sometimes you can have a Boogaloo or a Brainstorm deck that also just plays a lot of Con Man and a lot of, um, you know, Rubik's Instructor and stuff like that. Now, the regular Grass Knuckles deck was able to beat it. The mindset going into this matchup is you, instead of playing Grass Knuckles like a tempo, like an aggressive tempo deck, you really want to play it like a control deck. Uh, and you can actually use your Click B and stick that in front of the Con Man. That'll even trade. And you can use your Galactic Cactus as a really, really good tool. Um, I'll, I'll just pause this until <laughs> I'm done explaining. Um, Galactic Cactus, you know, if they play Robux Instructor on 2, you play Galactic Cactus in front of it. You just use a 1-drop to control their 2-drop. And if you can make sure that they don't get ahead those first couple of turns, then you're you're much more set up to win because, you know, if they end up playing, let's say, Hibbity Hop Gargon 5 and you play Gatling P, you're definitely going to win that. If they play, uh, there's just, you, you'll try to really just control those first at least two to three turns and then start putting a lot of tempo. And if you start putting even on turn four a Triceratops and a Juggernaut on the field, it's not a very easy thing for them to deal with. Uh, you can end up gaining a lot of tempo that way. Um, these two cards I added just as a tech just to make that matchup easier, let's say, against Garg Magnus, since I, I banned HG, Huge Gigantic at Super Brains, and um, Infinity. I didn't ban Z-Max. Everyone and their mom is going to use Garg Mech against me. That's what I'm expecting. Uh, so I ran one copy of Primal Potato Mine just to be able to deal with like the, the Con Man and the Aerobics Instructor. Uh, I had an extra slot for a card. And I also ran two... I was experimenting with two Hibernating Berries. Now, these days... Um, I would definitely be running Paracup. I find that that actually plays around Field Clear. It also plays around, like, Barrel of Deadbeards. If they play Barrel of Deadbeards, you can play Paracup in five. It's like, what are they supposed to do? You're getting a three cause five, four in the water lane. Uh, I was experimenting with the uh, Hibernating Berry, which is able to front things a little bit maybe better than Paracup. Not really. <laughs> it seems like Paracup's a better card. But it does benefit from the splash. And also, if you have the Galactic Cactus explode on the field, uh, it's going to be able to deal with that. So, again, I was using this as a strong overall. It's, it's a very, very strong deck. It's a lot of really good matchups. It's just the power. This is kind of the deck you need to counter in terms of its power. Uh, and I attacked a couple of cards, expecting Gargamek, and that's what we got. Uh, I felt pretty comfortable with this matchup at the time. It wasn't like the greatest matchup for Grass Knuckles. Grass Knuckles can be better against a Morticia and against uh, Brainstorm and stuff like that. But um, even against Brain Freeze, I had tested this extensively with no Blockbusters in the deck against lock in, Lockout. And this deck was just killing Lockout when I was practicing. Uh, ended up with a pretty decent starting hand. And again, you're going to see, instead of playing really aggressively, I'm, I think this was my mindset at the time. Uh, I'm going to really try to play this like Control. Uh, turns out that it doesn't look like Gargmet because he's running Disco. Like, is this a burn deck? I wasn't really expecting that. Um, so what I was actually doing in terms of playing control, that's a really interesting pass, is I'm expecting him to play a second card this turn, and I, I want to get a two-for-one with the Galactic Cactus and actually preserve more resources, as opposed to, let's say, if he plays Aerobics, if I played the Galact on one, I would not have actually had a way to just remove it off the field, or if we played Gargologist is another dangerous card, I would not have had an answer to that. Uh, the Galacta was, the can do three damage because it explodes. Um... So he bungees. So it's still a two for one. So that's still value. I mean, he's a little bit ahead on the field, but that that two one that he has on the field is very easy to deal with. The forget me nots kind of curves that, which is nice. There's the aerobics. So considering playing the hibernating berry just in two, it seems a little slow because then it just dies to fruit cake. Um, I think this is what I do. Use the forget-me-nuts, prevent the trick from happening, make that trade, and then play something that will even trade with the aerobics next turn. We actually have the root wall in our hands, so that actually sort of ensures that we'll be able to get... We'll actually win the trade next turn against the aerobics once the Triceratops goes up to two attack. Are you guys enjoying the, the after-the-fact voiceover? I kind of like, like this to be able to chill, because I'm always like so nervous during the tournament. Be able to like really explain a lot more detail of what, what kind of I was thinking. People in the chat right now are telling me this is called Igma Burn. It's not actually Gargmech, but 
it has a lot of, at least in the early game, a lot of similar cards. And the mindset of playing control is definitely relevant in a deck like this. Uh, so we're going to root wall that. He's very likely going for a fruitcake. I feel like I would should really be playing the photosynthesizer first. Oh, wow, so I'm t developing... Oh, I didn't even realize. Developing the hibernating berry. I feel like now the play would have been photosynthesized. I guess I really wanted to get value out of the hibernating berry, because if I wait too long, I'm not going to be able to get it. And we actually do have a pretty decent health total, so... It sort of negates the fruitcake. Final mission doesn't really do anything. Ends up strengthening that one. So that ends up doing pretty significant damage. It's five bullseye bring us down to ten. We still have no block. I mean, at least that aerobic constructor's gone. Uh, we have, again, because we play the hibernating very a decent field, I probably these days would have gone for um, root wall the, the, the triceratops and then played photosynthesizer and juggernaut. Um, in a different lane to counter something. Probably would have ended up trading a two for one with the with the strength with the uh, the brute strength. Anyway, uh, I, I think we're, we're we're probably expecting binary stars. If I, I don't remember exactly what was in there, but that kind of feels like a binary stars. The Gatling seems too slow, and we need to get more value from that. Kind of see what we can dig up there. Playing around fruitcake. That's why we're buffing the the four eight. This this apple saucer actually gives us opportunity to to counter a binary stars here. I, I don't I don't know what's in there and I don't I don't remember what I was thinking at the time, but it kinda makes sense. Got it. So now Yeah, so now we end up with you know, with an eight four in lane one. We end up with a five seven going in the next turn, and everything else even trades, and our opponents uh, you know, has extreme card disadvantage. Really not going to be a lot of ways for him to break through unless he gets like another binary plus a trick or something. We also have a 15 damage combo in our hand if we just play Click P and, and the Gatling. Flamenco. Not good enough. And this, this will easily finish him off. There's no way with one brain he can take out a guy that has four health. It's just guaranteed lethal. <coughs> Thank you, Blueberry Pie 76. Welcome to the primal. What I'm talking about. Alright. It kind of felt like binary stars. It could have been like a like a jester. Would it would have been the other card that maybe fit into that deck list? I wasn't familiar with the Igma Burn Z Mac deck, but uh, that's what he tried. Um, I, theoretically, that could be good against Grass Knuckles going like a very aggressive, but again, I think with the mindset of playing defensive, it turns this deck from a really aggressive deck. Actually, you can play it control and, and play it that way. Just something we discovered during tech, during uh, testing, especially with Galactic Cactus, because that's a one-drop that easily counters the aggressive two-drops. Um, Alright, so just going to the next one, probably just deciding... Uh, what zombie deck to use. I'm probably going to go away from the Valkster since that sort of creamed him. I, I just thought that he would probably go after the Valkster. Like, I do repeat decks pretty often, kind of taking a look at this mid-tuna deck, which, you know, if you're really going to... I ban Grass Knuckles, so at that time, if you're trying to go after Valkster, the deck would have been Citron Elusive. So it has the Forget-Me-Nuts, and it has, like, the Field Clear, like the Shrinking Violet. That's, by the way, one reason that matchup is difficult for Valkster, is because Shrinking Violet clears the lane clog and that's the main way that you're actually controlling your opponent um with the balkster deck this is a really good deck list um it happens the the imp throwing him is particularly good against the guardian class they set up that forget me notes on turn one you stick an imp throwing in front of it it's just so devastating um i end up changing this list later in the tournament uh end up running a lot more um landscapers and those help deal with haunted pumpkins and split peas and this chump still thing the last thing i wanted <clears throat> Switching to Neptuna is if he goes back to Chomzilla. Uh, one thing I think I noticed about Happy Shroom is he did not repeat decks that he lost with. There's just a few like psychological things I kind of like looked at the history and see if they did they win or did they lose, and if they if they won did they repeat the deck? If they lost did they repeat the deck? Uh, you're allowed to again use the same hero as many times as you want. It's not like a it's not like you know, a lot of tournaments, once you play with the hero, you're not allowed to re repeat it. So I'm just thinking here, again, really, really don't want to bump into Ringzilla 
with Neptuna, especially this version, really, really dies hard. It happens to be, you can also just play very slow against Neptuna and then hit him with Nanyun Rings and then just start swarming 4 4. It's another really, probably even a better way. I didn't know that at the time. Um, but yeah, deciding to commit to it. Don't expect him to repeat on the. Definitely don't expect him to repeat the Chomsilla, and we end up with the matchup, and he goes exactly, exactly, exactly what I wanted, which was Citron. I honestly didn't even review this video. I'm actually watching this live. I, don't, I remember a little bit sort of what happened and remember my mindset, but like, um, yeah, we end up with a curve. Again, you don't need a one because of Forget-Me-Nuts or whatever, like your, what else do they play on one in this deck? Is there Galactus in this deck? Maybe I was looking for a Rolling Stone. Kind of actually looks like I was looking for a Rolling Stone there. Once you have an Imp Throwing Imp, you really don't need it. But there's that, which is fine. You don't lose anything. We don't have any tricks to play anyway. And plus, this will either... If he protects it, it'll give us two Imps. And if not, then it's just an uh, even trade. We get another guy in the field. We have two lanes clogged. Um, and who knows what even the Imp Throwing Imp ends up throwing here. Uh, the Excavator is very, very sad. Running four black holes, which is very, very good against this deck. It reduces the attack. It sucks all the beans from the water lane in. This is sort of a nightmare for the Citron Elusives um, deck. There's a Lima. That Lima is, like, very threat. See, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's a good play, the Photosynthesizer. But again, this is after a lot of testing. I have no ex expectation for anyone. No one's, no one's testing around Imp throwing it. But for me, after testing a lot of Imp throwing, that was a really, really, really lucky Toxic Waste. And it could have been a Fishy and would have been the same thing or Infinite Clone. But uh, taking out his threat, that's just so much value. Because at the end of the day, why don't you just let the Forget-Me-Nuts die? And then they'll have just a 1-1, one, one, and you can kind of just, like, ignore that. Maybe if you need there to be open a lot of open lanes, this is the correct play, because it'll end up opening this lane. Um, but you're just giving a whole extra... Like, instead of giving a whole extra imp, just let them have the 1-1 one, one on the field. Unless you're really playing around... Maybe he's just playing around Weed Spray and Rolling Stones and stuff like that. Ends up that I got a... Um, it's That's a whole extra imp. <coughs> It also prevents a little bit of damage in lane 2. It's the best thing I got. I, I feel like maybe Black Hole in 2 could have actually been better there. Because I have Excavator in hand. I'd like to set that up. I guess I'm going to do Pogo next turn anyway. The worst case scenario there would have been getting an Imp in 3. As I'm pointing right now. But we ended up... Because it would have just died for free to the... Actually, no. The second one would have not would have actually traded with Forget-Me-Nuts. That would have been better. Anyway, it's a little awkward, but he just doesn't have a whole lot of pressure on this field right now. And we have the other lanes clogged. Uh, we have to we know we have to play around Shrinking Violet, and we now have to play around Jelly Bean. Not this turn, but maybe next turn. Pogo seems like the only reasonable play here. Honestly, looking back, Black Hole in 2 is probably the play last turn into Excavator. Into Excavator, and then we can replay the Black Hole. It just would be a lot more value than this Pogo here. So, probably a bit of a misplay. Uh, narrating, I'm talking actually a lot more than I usually do, so I'm actually killing my voice, is the thing. <laughs> so he protects that, it's a good play. And then, I don't know about that Rotobega, I think you need to get value from your cards. The bounce ends up being really good, plus right, the root wall didn't play around around Pogo. Uh, very questionable play here. The Rotobega really trades with the, with the Swabby, which is not... Not even that good. Like, I feel like in this deck, that especially since he was running low on cards, we ended up bouncing twos. Now he does have cards, but... Um, it, 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 I feel like you just need to get a little more value out of each card you play instead of just stubbornly... And it doesn't even really give him much of a tempo advantage. Uh, so Pogo, Black Hole into Excavator looks pretty good. Uh, there's a Shrinking Violet. It's a decent one. But again, it doesn't actually give him really any tempo, so we've really stabilized this field. Um, well, not... <coughs> Bounce the walnut, make the trade. There's that. I'm not even so sure, but I guess the, the black hole getting value this turn. I just think there might be a, a stronger card that he plays next turn that you actually want to bounce with the excavator here. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Questionable play so far. The cowboy is looking pretty good. You just want to play around Jelly Bean combo. 
uh, which is very good against that. That's probably what I'm thinking. I'm not playing around second shrinking, but probably more jelly beans in the deck now than there are. Um, I'm just gonna grab like a cough drop so I can continue narrating here. Where are you? Hold on. It just depends what he has in his hands, you know? It's that there for some reason. He doesn't want to ping the 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 imp throwing imp every single turn, that's why. So he just wanted to clog that lane so he could play the Admiral somewhere. He's doing a lot of damage here actually. Probably playing that fart card is good. See what we get. This is not a great position. What is this? An excavator? Fry, do you consider yourself a chef? <laughs> a chef? I don't know. I, I cook like a dad. I just put things in a in a in a in an oven or just fry things in a pan. I don't follow recipes. Not really sure about that rotavega placement, but we end up bouncing it anyway. This is not a great position for us. I feel like playing the cowboy could have been a lot better. I was very afraid of the jelly bean. Probably why I didn't play it, but still, I don't know. I'm playing Admiral. That's actually a really cool Corv, um, because it actually strikes through. Uh, so we could go for Cowboy Frenzy, we can also go for Excavator Environment Frenzy. See, now I would play the Excavator. I don't know what, what's with the Cowboy. Because then if he removes the... I mean, he needs the Admiral Navy Beam, that's sort of his... I mean, if he fronts... <laughs> Plus the jelly bean becomes a lot stronger now. I don't know about that play. <laughs> After the fact, this turn I would have gone for excavator going viral. Maybe it's just if he bounces the corp here, if he gets that off the field. But the shrinking violet is devastating here, man. If he gets rid of the corp, then his admiral would live. We have to like kill the. This gives us two opportunities to kill the admiral instead of just one. Since that's probably what he needs, that's going to be his best way of bursting us. You know, he just needs six more damage. Let's see if he fronts the cowboy. Nope. The good news is, is that the imp throwing imp um, always, it, well, doesn't always throw the four. It's a 50-50, so we can at least block that three damage. You got that from Photosynthesizer, I suppose? Not in the deck list. Um, this core dies. It doesn't do any frenzies anyway. In fact, the Imp-Throwing Imp doesn't throw anything. No, the Rotavega is actually not even hitting the Imp-Throwing Imp, so that Rotavega setup is pretty good. He's getting down to one health here, bro. Rolled a three and a one. <laughs> so an Admiral just kind of... Admiral and a Bean just wins the game. Straight up. Uh, we... Yeah, you know, he's down to five with no block meters, so that's the good news. I go for Cowboy. I gotta play around Cool Bean. If we play, um, if he has a cool bean, then we're kind of screwed. We actually are able to play a Rolling Stone still this turn. We can also play the environment. So this is just a lot of just opting for pressure. It could, that was probably right. Playing the mug into a cool bean loses us the game. Um, usually, it'll just give him two turns to do one damage. It, it would have been almost impossible. Um, so playing those two, being able to bounce. And again, we still have a Rolling Stone hand, which is a huge luxury here. Just case we just need to take out a little bit but it, it, he doesn't look like he doesn't look like he has anything in fact he's kind of feeding the frenzy there there's a mog he was planning on that um <sighs> doink so that takes those off the field uh, i think rolling stone's gonna be the play Probably doing it in two just so we can get this four damage for sure, because then two damage wins in three, and then two damage wins in five in case he blocks. And if we block, if he blocks, he actually, it's actually guaranteed lethal because if you already use this Mog, there's no way of preventing the damage in lane five. So there's also no way of preventing the damage really in lane four either because of the Cowboys. We just had too much pressure. Uh, and that was it. It came down a lot to the matchup. I mean, all three times we really got the matchup we expected. Um, I feel like, again, earlier in the tournament I was playing predictably. I feel like this was the first match where I started, like, really understanding how tournament matchups work and how to build decks in order to counter multiple matchups. I feel like this was really the time that I just turned it into first gear and was actually 
you know, playing the tournament in a way I was proud of. Not, I mean, maybe the last game a few of my plays were a little questionable, but at least in terms of the, my deck building and what I was choosing to play and the, the, the matchup expecting and stuff like that. So, um, as you can see, it was best of five, so it ended up being a 3-0. Um, and yeah, that was round 11 of the tournament, round 3 of the playoffs. This was really fun narrating this after the fact and watching it with you guys. Excited to upload this to YouTube. And uh, in the future rounds, you'll see my actual live commentary while I was actually playing because um, I my microphone was working then. But anyway, that was really, really fun. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next round. Peace. This is Fry.